long ball this afternoon. Yeah, we'll get to that weather here in just a second. Amani Larry is in, and the St. Joseph Health first pitch from uh, Justin Lampkin is a cold strike. So Larry down in the count 0 and 1. He steps into this game with a 309 average, and now he's lifted a ball into left field, heading over to it, and on the run, making the catch is Caden Sorrell, who gets the start in left today. Yeah, that's a, a Right there, well, Caden Sorrell being left-handed, he's got to reach across his body to make that catch. Uh, Hayden shot out there right-hander probably would have been a little bit easier as he's just going to have the glove hand there, but Sorrell tracked that very well. and That's probably the hardest hit ball that we've seen from Amani Larry this weekend. Blue skies above us, some clouds. Picture perfect day, sun splashed. Olsen Field down there. Mershon, David Mershon, the hitter, first pitch to him, fouled away onto the east lawn. Scoreboard temperature shows us 77 degrees, and right now, really no wind to speak of. Weather brought to you by the Pool Guy. Visit the Pool Guy's pool store off William D. Fitch next to the HEB at Tower Point. David Mershon, a 380 hitter, and he's fouled this one off to the same place. First two pitches from Justin Lampkin. He goes opposite way and fouls him onto the east lawn. He's down in the count 0-2. Rashawn switch hitter with batting lefty yesterday, and he got a base hit there just past the diving uh, Caden Kent. That was two batters before the home run by Hunter Hines. That was a, a big at bat because he had fought and fouled off pitches in that at bat. 0 oh, 2 pitch and a swing and a miss. Upstairs, he struck him out. Two down in the top of the first. Good 93 mile an hour fastball. Changed elevation on it. Uh, might not have been a called strike, but uh, you change that eye level and get the punch out there. And now Dakota Johnson, 398 the average. He provides the power for Mississippi State. He and Hunter Hines, these next two hitters. That's a call strike to start Dakota Jordan's count. 11 homers for Jordan on the season, 35 runs driven in. Jordan and the Aggies, Braden Montgomery, the top two RBI guys in the SEC, that's inside triple. Relatively quiet, and you've just been playing with fire with him. He had that line drive before Hines' home run yesterday. He really got all over that ball, but the Aggies have kind of kept him at bay. 1-1 one, one pitch, high and tight, 2-1. and one. So Justin Lampkin trying to work through a clean top of one, 2-1 two, one pitch to Dakota Jordan. Went with a breaking ball right there, called strike, got it over, and it's two and two. Told J&M's in the red, white, and blue unis on this Saturday afternoon. Get you their defense here in just a second if we can. The 2-2 pitch, check swing. He went around. Now did he get a foul ball? No, they just said he didn't go around. Wow, he didn't go around? And that's a 3-2 count. see a replay on that. Well, we've got a replay in our monitor, and you're right. I thought he went around live, but he held up the bat just before it got across home plate. So that was the right call by the home plate umpire, Morris Hodges. It's a full count now to Dakota Jordan, and here is that pitch. And a breaking ball got him looking this time. Froze him. Two strikeouts for Lampkin in the top of one. Good pitch right there, and also the efficiency to only have 11 pitches that inning. Uh, both these decided to do it. It'll be interesting to watch him pitch. Gerangelo Sanja, yes, he throws left and right-handed. And the first pitch to Gavin Grohovac is a ball, 1-0. Oh. Now he comes back with the next offering, and it's 2-0. Oh. That missed as well. A little bit more electric stuff right-handed. He's been 93 and 94 on those first two pitches. 2-0. Oh. Now he pumps a strike right down the heart of the plate at a fastball. Two and one to Gavin Grohovac, and Gavin's hitting 330. He has eight home runs on the year now after he launched two of them on Friday night. Swing and a miss on the 2 1, waved right through it, two balls, two strikes. There's a 95, so that's the pure fastball right there. Has not thrown a breaking pitch yet. And now two and two. That's low and away on a fastball. So full count to Gavin Grohovac, lead man to the plate for the Aggies. So three infielders to the left side of second base, shift him to pull. And Sainja comes with a full count pitch. Call strike three on the inside corner. He backed him off the plate and he struck him out looking. One 
One down, bottom of one. And have a wide strike zone. Both teams will have to adjust to that. That one right there, Grahovic not real happy leaving the batter's box. Now Jace Lavulette will step up from the left side. And they're going to stay right-handed against Lavulette. Yeah, Surprising. Same. Yeah, and they shift him to pull to the right side, and he throws the first pitch away for a ball to Jace Lavulette. It's 1-0. Oh. Jace hitting 305, 12 homers, 29 RBIs. Here's the 1-0. Chop that foul just off the bag at first base. Not foul by much down the first baseline, but it's one and one. Now, Jace came into this series having reached base in all 21 AM games, but he has not been on base this weekend. He's 0 for 8 in this series, not reaching base either Thursday or Friday. 1 1 pitch to him, and that's a call strike. Like he took something off that one at 86 miles per hour. It's one and two. Yeah, first breaking ball there. Outside half, good pitch. And now a one ball, two strike pitch to Jace Lavulette. That offering is on its way. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. Sainja has struck out the first two Aggies to come to the plate. He's trying to match what Justin Lampkin did in the top of the first. Lampkin went three up, three down against the Bulldogs, and he struck out two of them. He's going to stick right-handed all three of these batters. Now, he has to determine his side against a switch hitter like Braden Montgomery, and they cannot change during the at-bat. He's going all right-handed throwing in this first inning thus far. Braden Montgomery, he has 10 home runs. He's got a 365 average, and the first pitch to him is outside for a ball, 1 0. So the Aggies have Jace Lavulette and Braden Montgomery with double digit home runs this year. 1 0 pitch. That's outside for a ball, it's 2 0. AM and Moorhead State, they are the only two teams in the country with two players already with 10 or more home runs. 2 0 pitch. Swinging, he tried to go the opposite way. Fouled that off straight back, two and one. And the shift has been on the entire inning. Three infielders to the right side of second base with Braden Montgomery at the plate. We await the two one, here it is. Swinging, tried to go the opposite way again. Fouled that off, two and two. That's just 96, that's the hardest throw he's had in this game. You see that Sanja is really good from the right side. We hadn't seen him throw a, anything other than a warm-up pitch left-handed. 2-2 but... on its way to Braden Montgomery. He's tagged this opposite field, and that's headed toward the scoreboard. That will hit the scoreboard, and you can put a run on it, too. One to nothing, A&M on the 11th home run of the year by Braden Montgomery. He goes opposite field to get it. And that's uh, getting an elevated fastball outside part of the plate, and he got all over that one. Solo shot, and the Aggies take the initial lead. Braden Montgomery now driven in 37 runs on the year. He is the SEC leader in RBIs. Jackson Appel steps to the plate last couple of weeks. Jackson has been nothing short of terrific. First pitch to him, a called strike. 0 oh and 1. Jackson's 2 for 7 in this series. He's been swinging a hot bat as of late. That pitch fouled it off, and now it's an 0 oh 2 count. Had to call time for just a second. So the ball could be retrieved. Now we're ready to go again. 0-2 pitch to Jackson Appel, and he's lifted this foul out of play. Jackson never seems to worry about being down in counts. He will look at pitches, doesn't panic. He does well with two strikes. He has only struck out five times all season. Here's the 0-2. Fouled that off. So he's fighting with two strikes here. 16 walks, that's a great ratio. Exactly what the Aggies need behind the 44 farms meet of the order for the Aggies. So another 0-2 pitch coming from Sanja. It's 
taking his time with this 0-2 pitch. Now he delivers, and that's fouled off. Third straight foul ball after falling behind 0-2. So Grohovac and Lavulette both struck out, but then Braden Montgomery lifted a pitch opposite field off the scoreboard in left. Put a run on the board, and it's one to nothing Aggies on the homer. 0-2 pitch again. This is hit pretty sharply. Back up the middle, but that's exactly where the shortstop, David Mertom, today to sign up. One to nothing Aggies, and here is the hot hitting Hunter Hines to the plate to start things off in the top of two. First pitch to him from Justin Lampkin, called strike. Well, to see Hunter Hines, you want it uh, with uh, nobody on in a one to nothing lead. Check swing here, that floated in off speed. He did not go around, and it's one ball, one strike. Yeah, a lot like Dakota, Dakota Jordan did a good job of checking that swing. So left on left and a 1-1 pitch. It's on its way. Swing and a miss. He was out in front of that. One and two. Hunter Hines, a 304 hitter. He has six home runs this year. Five of those are in conference play. He's played five SEC games and he's hit five home runs against conference competition. Two of them this weekend. 1-2 pitch. Got it. Check swing. He went around. Another off-speed pitch. Fooled him, and Justin Lampkin has now struck out three in a row. Yeah, that one's floating to the outside, and I just uh, saw it as a strike for too long, unable to check on that one. A big punch out right there against their hottest hitter. You get Jordan and Hines up, they, the proceed with caution sign goes up as well, but he struck both of them out. Now here's Connor Hyzak, and on the first pitch to him, he ripped it foul over toward the bleachers that are covering the west lawn. Yeah, and somebody sitting in the grass right there was really happy that fence was right in front of him. <laughs> That's about all I mean, they, stop they were talking about that after it already bounced away. <laughs> Fouled away here straight back on the 0-1, so Justin Lampkin has Connor Hyzak down in the count 0-2. Hyzak's a 363 hitter. So no balls, two strikes with an out in the top of two. A&M leading the ball game, one to nothing. We've got a solo shot already from Braden Montgomery. Here's the 0-2. Reached out, got the ground ball over to the right side. Ryan Targach will field on the run and throw on the hop, and he gets Connor Hyzak. Moving towards the ball with his steps just right. When he picked that up, he was on his, uh, uh, you know, on the, uh, the left foot, and then he comes down on the right foot with the ball in his glove, and that's when he makes the throw and a good uh, transition right there. That was a tough play for where he was standing uh, to get Isaac at first base. Here's Aaron Downs, the left fielder. First pitch to him will miss. It's 1-0. Downs hitting 341. All of the first six in this Bulldog lineup hitting over 300 coming into this game. That's a breaking ball that just missed the zone, and it's 2-0 to Downs. Yeah, but he's got 13 singles and just two doubles, and, and that's that, that singles batting average that Mississippi State is, has up and down their lineup. Swing and a miss there, 2-1. and one. Yeah. Not a whole lot of extra base hits. Yeah, they don't strike out a whole lot, although they've got some Ks already in this one, and they did strike out on Thursday against Ryan Prager. But in general, they don't strike out a whole lot. That's a swing and a miss, but... They do just enough to put the ball in play. Well, Justin Lampkin is trying to get the strikeout count up against the Bulldogs. Two and two to Downs, and he just struck him out. Swing and a miss, and Lampkin is dialing up the K. Four strikeouts in his first two innings. And the Texas A&M Aggies will take a one to nothing lead into the bottom of the second. Series deciding game on this Saturday. Ted steps in with a 328 average. He's left the yard three times this year. 14 runs driven in. Gerangelo Sanja continually throwing right-handed, even though he can throw both right and left. And he just fired the first pitch at the bottom of the second called strike to Ted Burton. So it's 0-1. Let's see what he does against Hayden Schott, the next batter up for the Aggies. Hayden over there on the on-deck circle. That's a breaking ball called strike. So he has Ted Burton down in the count 0-2. Ted takes a deep breath, steps back in from the right side and taps the plate. Here is the 0-2. 
ground ball swinging. This is at the shortstop, David Mershon. He'll throw on the run, and he will throw out Ted Burton one down. All about getting the ball out of the glove as quickly as Mershon did right there. Kind of a, a looping throw, but quick transition, still with his weight kind of moving towards the Aggie dugout more than uh, towards first base, and that was a fine play right there. Getting Burton by a step and a half. So Gerangelo Sanja does throw left-handed against the left-handed hitting Hayden Shot. Shot lays down a bunt right up the first base line, but in time the catcher Johnny Long will field and throw him out just barely. Two down. Kind of threw that through shot as he's going down that line. Got a little bit up in the air there, and it when it stopped. See Johnny pick that one up and skip it in there to Hines. Yeah, and he threw it in the dirt. Yes. If he doesn't throw it in the dirt, it might hit shot on the leg. And then we'd have one of those, let's go to replay and see if it's interference or not. <laughs> That's right. Quickly two outs in the bottom of the second, and Ollie Camarillo to the plate. Ollie working on a hit streak of eight games in a row. 305 his average for the Aggie shortstop. First pitch was a ball, 1-0. and Here's that next offering, and that's a call strike with a fastball, 1-1. One and one. The Struggles there at uh, in Arlington in the tournament seemed like a long time ago. He started to swing the bat well. He's had a good weekend against these Bulldogs. Ollie is 3-for-7 in the series. That's low, so it's a ball and two strikes to Ollie Camarillo. That one got a little bit of long, popped straight out of the glove. I don't know if he was crossed up or not. I think it, communication electronically now, that should go away. Swing and a miss on the one-two breaking ball. Struck him out. Third for the Bulldogs, Justin Lampkin back to work. Called strike on the first pitch to him. Justin has four strikeouts already in this game in his first two innings. On just 23 pitches. And two innings plus one. 0-1 pitch, that's a call strike to Bryce Chance, 0-2. Bryce Chance steps in as a 250 hitter. DHing today for the Bulldogs, here's the 0-2. Upstairs and away on a fastball at 91, so it's a ball and two strikes. Lampkin, the lefty, back to work. Delivery, breaking ball that just missed the outside corner. Not by much, and it's two and two. Tried to back to him right there. and Kind of never had that last little snap. 2-2 two -two pitch right here. Lifted right field, stopping right there, and then drifting backwards is Braden Montgomery. He will make the easy catch. One down in the top of the third. Read that perfectly off the bat, did he? Bulldogs third baseman reporting to Logan Kohler. Logan Kohler will hit. So AM leading one to nothing in the third here. This series, the Aggies and Bulldogs and the Arkansas Auburn series on the Plains get concluded today. Those were the two series that started on Thursday. Low and away on the first pitch to Logan Kohler. It's one and oh. Do you have one final as Georgia beat Alabama nine to five? That's in the first game of a double header. 1-0 pitch to Kohler. And that's inside for a ball, 2-0. Bounce back for Georgia. They had a rough weekend last week, didn't they, Will? Yeah, lost all three to Kentucky. But if you listened to me last night, you thought would have thought Georgia was phenomenal on opening weekend. <laughs> I was listening to If you. any uh, Wildcats were watching the broadcast last night, I should apologize to them if they're tuned in again today. That's a foul ball straight back, 2-1 to Kohler. Well, they're not going to have their game start until uh, I think probably two or three minutes from now, so they tuned us in. Yeah. Kentucky has won every conference game. They're 4-0 in the game. That's outside for a ball, 3-1. First time to be behind the count. Shift on to the right side for Logan Kohler. Lamp in the delivery. That's a called strike. He stays in the count. It's full up. Full count pitch to Logan Kohler is on its way. 
fouled away. Stick with a 3 2. The other doubleheader has Vanderbilt trailing South Carolina in Columbia, South Carolina, 8 to 3 in the bottom of the eighth inning. So Bama, Georgia, and Vandy, Carolina playing doubleheaders today. Those series were washed out last night. 3 2 pitch again. Got him looking on the outer half. And Justin Lampkin has struck out five as he goes through the lineup the first time here. Pretty good control of that strike zone right there. Those last two pitches really did a good job. Come back and get that strikeout. Now it's the nine hole hitter in Johnny Long and the first pitch to him, a strike with a fastball on the inner half. It's 0-1. Johnny Long, the average, 262, 15th start of the year. 0-1, swing and a miss on a pitch away. Long is down in the count, 0-2. It ain't easy because Mississippi State's lineup is easy, but Lampkin pitching in the rocking chair right now. Easy go. The 0-2, the and he went high and tight with that one. That might not have ended up a hit by pitch with him kind of sticking that elbow out if that had made contact with him. So it's one and two. Lampkin to the windup, the delivery. Got him looking on the inside corner with a breaking ball. 12th man will lead things off. First pitch to him from St. John is low and in for a ball, one and oh. Targotch hitting 185 right now. This is his ninth start, swing and a miss right here. May have tip fouled that right back into the mid of the catcher, Johnny Long. It's a 1-1 count, and now they put the shift on to the right side. Three infielders to the right of second base. Here's the 1-1. He ripped that, but right at the shortstop, David Mershon. A line out to the Bulldog shortstop, Mershon, and that has been part of the story this weekend for AM. Some hard hit balls that have not fallen for base knocks. Well, another one above 100 miles an hour, that one at 101. So just kind of been the luck of uh, the Aggies this weekend. But you'd rather see Targotch hit it hard and get the out than have the struggles. Ball strike to Caden Sorrell, who gets the start today on the first pitch to him. Caden is our Slovacic Sausage player profile. Slovacic Sausage is the official sausage of Texas A&M Athletics. That pitch is in the dirt. Caden, perfect game, rated him a top 10 prospect in Texas during the recruiting process. Hit 393 as a junior in high school, hit 363 as a senior. His father was a college baseball player, and both his grandfathers played in the major leagues. He's got a 2-1 count right now, and Caden Sorrell, starting in left field, is our Slovakic Sausage player profile. He's lifted this opposite field down the line and left. It's a long run, but getting there on the line and making the catch is Aaron Downs. Two outs. I know we don't. Uh, Mike Elko doesn't want the home plate uh, camera to look on there past the outfield and see Connor Wigman throwing the football, but some Aggie fans would. Spring practice number two unfolding across Wellborn Road and on the Coolidge practice fields as we speak. Mike Elko, first year head coach. The Aggies are gonna play the Bulldogs in football this year, October 19th at Davis Wade Stadium in Starkville. Gavin Grohovac, the hitter, a strike and then a ball and one and one is his count. Two down, nobody on, bottom of the third. A&M leading Mississippi State one to nothing. One one pitch, swing and a miss, it's down to the count one and two. It is a gorgeous Saturday for some baseball at Bluebell Park and for Aggie football to go through their workouts with spring ball underway. Yesterday was the start of it. Fouled off by Gavin Grohovac, still one and two. The maroon and white game will be April 20th at Kyle Field. That will close spring practice for Mike Elko and the Aggies. One, two pitch to Grohovac. Swinging fouled off onto the bleachers over the west wall. Still able to get around on that 91 mile an hour fastball that was inside and tight. Let's see if this has set up Sanjay to work away with the breaking pitch. 
Hit this into center field on the run, on the jog. Top of four, Amani Larry up. He lined out to left field to start this game. First pitch from Justin Lampkin. He fouled it off straight back to the netting, so it's 0-1. Lampkin, no ball, one strike pitch. That's a call strike. Quickly has him down in the count, 0 and 2. See if he can sit down Amani Larry to start the fourth here. Pitch on its way. Call strike three. Got him looking. Inner half. And Justin Lampkin has seven strikeouts now as he rolls in to the fourth inning. And this is very Ryan Prager-like, isn't it? From what you saw from the Thursday, game one starter for the Aggies. I keep wanting to say Friday. Because, yeah, it's hard not to. Yeah. But Ryan struck out eight in six and a third innings as he was dominant. And Justin Lampkin doing phenomenal work here on Saturday thus far. A&M leading the game one to nothing in the top of the fourth. Only run of the game, a solo shot over the left field wall by Braden Montgomery. His 11th home run of the year. David Mershon, first pitch to him, a ball. Now Justin Lampkin comes back with the next offering. That's a call strike. It's one and one. Prager said after the game, I don't know if I had all my good stuff. Yeah, it's interesting to hear him say that when he looked so good out there. 1-1 one, one pitch from Lampkin to Mershon. Here it is. That's outside for a ball. Off speed, 2-1. and one. Marshawn taking his time, getting back in from the right side. Now he does. Lampkin is quick to work. 2-1 pitch. That's ripped, but it's just past the bag at third base in foul territory by about a foot or two. Hit it hard, just went foul. Two balls and two strikes. Early along with that uh, fly ball that Larry had, one of the harder hit balls for the Bulldogs here today at 97 miles an hour. 2-2 pitch from Justin Lampkin right here. Came inside, low and in. Check swing by Marshawn. He did not go around. Marshawn this weekend in the series is three for nine. 3-2 pitch, swinging right back at Justin Lampkin, and he knocked it straight down. He picks it up off the top of the pitcher's mound. And he'll throw out David Mershon. Two down. Left-hander fielding his position right there. Just ended up in the right spot with that ball right back at him. That really looked like it was going to get through into center field. But he knocked it straight down below him. And he picked it up off the mound and threw out Mershon. No panic. Yeah. Collected himself well to throw him out. Here's Dakota Jordan. First pitch to him. Call strike. And it is 0-1 to Jordan, who struck out looking earlier. Jordan, a 393 hitter on the season. Here is the 0-1. He hit that hard. Will it go fair or foul? And I mean by about a foot down the left field line. That went foul. So that's twice this inning. The Bulldogs have put a pretty good swing on a pitch, but they just went foul down the left field line. Yeah, that one right there at 106 off the bat. You just see that, that power that he has. The right-hander hitting it down the left field line. It's going to hook, and it hooked just enough. Well, Grohovic Grohov gave it to Carlton Fist the whole way. He's just like, no, nah, that's fine. Perhaps him waving it foul yeah. helped, too. Well, he saw it over his head. It was not going to stay. 0-2 pitch. High and away, a ball and two strikes to Dakota Jordan. Here's the one-two on its way. Call strike three, got him looking. And Justin is for the game. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Jace Laviolette leads off. Your score, Texas A&M one and Mississippi State nothing. First pitch to Laviolette, ball one. St. Joe will throw right-handed against him. That's inside for a ball, 2-0 to Jace LaViolette. Jace still looking for his first hit of this series. 
2-0. Swing and a miss. That looked off speed. And he was out in front of it, 2-1. Yeah, good shape to that breaking ball. Got him to swing over the top at 88. Here's the 2-1, swinging. He ripped that to right field, going back and dropping the ball on the track is Dakota Jordan. He had to make the run toward the short wall and right, and on the run, he dropped the baseball on the track, and Jace Laviolette will go all the way to second base. Hit it pretty well. It might be a straight-up double as Jordan had to get on the run, either a double or an error. Either way, Laviolette has second base. And the leadoff guy is in scoring position for AM in the bottom of four. I think that's going to go double because he also crashed into the ball right when the ball kind of got bobbled a little bit. You see it hit off the wall and then drop straight down at his feet where he has to pick it up. So second end of the game for the Aggies is also extra bases. Yeah, they put uh, two up in the hit column. So the two hits today for AM, a solo homer from Braden Montgomery. And now a double by Jay Slavulet. Montgomery steps in right here. First pitch high and away. 1-0. and Here's that next offering. And that's low and in. It's 2-0. and So the Aggies trying to add to their 1-0 lead here in the bottom of the fourth. Going to get a La Casa tequila break and play because they want to chat on the mound, do the Bulldogs. Take some time to enjoy the rest of this game responsibly with Lacaza's smooth tequila for rugged country. Lavulette and Montgomery, by the way, it is pretty rugged to face them. We like to call them our 44 Farms meet of the order. They've been so good this year. 44 Farms invites you to enjoy premium all-natural Angus beef by visiting 44farms.com. 44 Farms is the official beef of Texas A&M Athletics. 2-0 pitch, fouled that straight back, straight down and then trickled on back, and it's 2-1. and one. Meeting on the mound is over. We're back to action. Foul ball by Braden Montgomery in a 2-1 count. Same job from the stretch. The 2-1 on its way to Montgomery, and he tagged this deep to right field, headed toward the bullpen, and that ball is gone, and Braden Montgomery, two times to the plate, has gone yard twice. He's driven in all three, and the Aggies now lead it three to nothing. Hey, that means the order will stick to ribs right there. As you get that to carry up against the uh, retraining fence there on the railroad tracks. 372 feet, basically, and one that wasn't hit 100 miles an hour, 98 miles an hour. Oh, so he backed off that, huh? <laughs> Jackson appels the hitter in the first pitch to him as a strike. Aggies three, Bulldogs nothing, bottom of the fourth, all three runs driven in by Braden Montgomery, who has now homered twice in this game, and he has matched Jace Laviolette as the home run leader for the Aggies, both Jace and Braden with 12 out of the yard this year. Strike two to Jackson Appel, it's 0-2. So still nobody down at the bottom of the fourth to try to start something up new. And I've got to tell you, we have a phenomenal crowd on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. We are full everywhere, even section 12 and right. They're even standing behind the wall in left field. Great day to catch some Aggie baseball in this SEC game against the Bulldogs. That's a ball to Jackson Appel, one and two. Here's the next offering. That's low and in, two and two. Well, working that count like he always does. Jackson bounced out his first time up to shortstop. Here's the 2-2 from St. Ja. Swinging, he may have tipped foul that. He did, and then it popped out of the mitt of Johnny Long, so he's still up there. Tip foul that Johnny Long did not hang on to it. Popped out of his mitt. Yeah, 96 mile an hour fastball that you can live to swing again. See what he can do with another 2 2. Sane Jaw throwing right handed right now. He reached out and poked it opposite field, base hit. Went the other way on an outside pitch. Jackson Appel continues to go at it. 
quite nicely from the plate. Got a single right there, trying to start up something new. And that's exactly what you want to see from a guy that has a switch hitting ability and then can go to all fields. And that pitch was away. Contingent up there in those seats outside the ballpark. Yeah, sitting up high on the rec center and then standing behind the left field wall in front of the rec center. So nice to see here at Bluebell Park. That's a call strike after the mound meeting is over to Teddy Burton. His count is 0-1. And we're old enough to, to know Aggie Alley. Oh, that was a lot of fun. And are shocked that there isn't a couch on top of that U-Haul out there. <laughs> Backed up against the rec center. I got a feeling before this was over, somebody may find a way at least to sit on top of it. It wasn't our fault. <laughs> Will we get blamed for suggesting it? <laughs> That's a call strike to Ted Burton. He's down in the count 0-2. Yes. So try to start something up new. Still nobody out in the bottom of the fourth. Same job. Throws over to first base. He's done that a couple of times to look at Jackson Appel. Jackson. I wonder what his move's like right-handed and left-handed. That's a pretty solid move right there. But you know, if you had a great base runner, would you be tempted to go to the other side so you could go lefty and left? Is that his crush foul? Stick with an 0-2 count. Okay. You now you see Vandy who wants to run the, a bunch and you know put some left-handers out there. Well, this right-hander doesn't hit well anyway. I better... I better stay on that left-hand side and go against my tendency just to keep a runner there. There's just so much you can do with Durangelo Sanja because he throws right and left-handed. The 0-2 pitch on its way, and it's high for a ball with a fastball. Overthrew that one in 97. That's yeah. the hardest pitch he's thrown today. That's what I was going to ask, and you're right. I think that's the hardest he has thrown. And Yeah, but he was nowhere close to the zone. 1-2 now, swinging, foul ball, straight back to the net for Teddy Burton. Ted, the Michigan transfer, in three years in Ann Arbor, hit 31 homers for the Wolverines. Steps back in from the right side. Same job, the one-two. No, we're not going to get it yet. He makes that quick move over to first base. And again, back diving safely is Jackson Appel. Jackson's a catcher, but he runs better than you might think. And he actually is three of four in his stolen base attempts this year. Here's the one-two. Swing and a miss, and he struck Ted Burton out. One down at the bottom of the fourth with AM leading three to nothing. Cutter there or, or taking something off that fastball at 90. And we'll get uh, Sainz to switch around now and throw left handed again. As Hayden shot, the left handed hitter comes to the plate. Did Auburn score last night against Arkansas? They did, scored five, but lost the game. Okay, because it's shutouts. <laughs> no that scores. got to the backstop. Sorry, Scott. That got to the backstop, and Jackson Appel will go to second base. But uh, Arkansas will be looking for the sweep of Auburn today. Arkansas is 5-0 and in conference play. Auburn's 0-5. See if that's pass ball or wild pitch. But the Arkansas-Auburn series started with us on Thursday night, and they conclude today just like we do. It's 1-0 to Hayden Shot after that pitch went to the backstop. Jackson Appel now running at second base. Here is that 1-0, check swing, he went around, he was fooled, and it's 1-1. One one. It Hayden was, tried to bunt his way on earlier, it was unsuccessful. It was a wild pitch. A wild pitch is what sends a Pell to second base. Here's the 1-1, one one, swinging, and he chopped that foul right into his leg. I think it bounced off that protector right around the shin. It's a foul ball, 1-2 and two to Hayden shot. Hayden came into this game hitting 280. He's just one for seven in this series. One two pitch, swinging, chopped, first base side. That stays inside the line. And it's an easy play for Hunter Hines to field and touch first base. Three unassisted on the bounce out by shot. And on that, Jackson Appel moved up to third base. Ali Camarillo, the Aggie shortstop, coming to the plate. Got another run waiting 90 feet away. The 
Jackson Appel at third. Two down, bottom of the fourth. AM trying to add to their three to nothing lead. Right on right matchup here. And Gerangelo Sanja sails that one high on the first pitch to Ali Camarillo. It's 1 0. Oh. 1 0 pitch right here. Swing and a miss. Tomorrow night, 740 in Memphis. The Aggie basketball team will take on Houston in the second round of the NCAA tournament. Got the win last night over Nebraska, 98 to 83. Wade Taylor had 25 points. Great win for Aggie basketball. Now they try to advance to the Sweet 16 as they play Houston tomorrow night. Showing bunt up the third baseline, but he hit it too hard out there. Logan Kohler will. It's going to be Hunter Hines, who's hit two home runs this weekend, leading off for the Bulldogs in the top of the fifth. Justin Lampkin first pitch to him. That's a breaking ball. It'll miss. 1-0. Give you a women's sports update here this inning. Uh, women's basketball, they lost to Nebraska last night in the first round of the NCAA tournament, so their season is over, but a great season for Joni Taylor and the Aggie women. That is ripped by Hunter Hines in the right field base hit. Braden Montgomery will field it off the wall and get it back in. Nice throw and almost got Hunter Hines at second base. Caromed away. It may have hit Hines, but caromed away. That is a great throw by Braden Montgomery. That's a Moss Fajitas Moss hustle play as he gets it back in quickly, but Hunter Hines is safe at second base. It's a double for him to start the fifth, and it's the first hit and first base runner of the game for the Bulldogs. Yeah, that throw with uh, you the coming off the bag to field that was – Ali Camarillo, he was in a perfect spot to receive that and tag him before he got to the base. But Hines had that one kind of catch him in the body and just get away from the Aggies. No advancement there as it was picked up in short left field. And a foul ball on the first pitch to Connor Hyzak, so he's down to the count 0-1. But a hard hit with a lot of topspin, a lot like Lavalette's in the last inning. 01. So Hunter Hines continues to be the biggest hitting bulldog of them all this weekend. That's a ball, one and one to Connor Hyzak. So women's basketball, they make the NCAA tournament in year two with Joni Taylor. Softball, they'll play Auburn later today at 4.30. Softball beat Auburn last night. That's a foul ball straight back, one and two to Isaac. Women's swimming and diving, they're in the Check NCAA one, championships two. right now in Athens, Georgia. Check one, two. Thomas Dick tells me that Aggie soccer won today in an exhibition against Baylor, two to nothing. Spring exhibition for G. Guerrero and Aggie soccer. Here is the one, two, swinging, fly ball, shallow center field. Jace Laviolette coming in, he will make the catch, and there's one out. And we want to tell you that all this month, Texas A&M Athletics joins the university community and the nation in celebrating Women's History Month, presented by T-Mobile, by highlighting the pioneers and the contributors to the Aggie experience through sport. To learn more, log on to 12thman.com slash Women's History Month. Isaac flies out, one down, top of the fifth, A&M leading three to nothing. Aaron Downs is the hitter. First pitch from Justin Lampkin. That's a call strike, 0 and 1. So Justin Lampkin set everybody down that he faced through the first four innings. Then Hines doubled off of him to start this frame. That's the first hit and first base runner for the Bulldogs. Lampkin right now, eight Ks through four and a third. That's outside to Downs, and the count is one ball and one strike. Well, perfect 3-4 with those eight strikeouts. Exactly the start Jim Schlossnagel wanted from Lampkin. In this series decider with the Bulldogs. That's a call strike on a breaking ball. So Aaron Downs is down in the count, one and two. Lampkin from the stretch. Looks at second base briefly, now comes to the plate. The one-two pitch, and he struck him out swinging, and he went breaking ball again. Number nine right there, number nine. He's flat out dealing. He needs to get through Bryce Chance to get through five innings. If you look out at the scoreboard, A&M, three runs, four hits, no errors. Mississippi State, no runs, a hit, no errors. 
All three runs for the Aggies have come home courtesy of Braden Montgomery, who has hit two home runs in this game. Bryce Chance, the first pitch to him, up for a ball with a fastball. It's 1-0. and Chance flew out to right field his first time up. That was back in the third inning. Justin Lampkin from the stretch, the 1-0 on its way. That's a ground ball hit right at Ted Burton, the first baseman, and he will field and take the bag himself. Lampkin beating Alabama. And Ryan Targotch leads off the TX Whiskey bottom of the fifth, and it's a call strike to start him off. So that will be Vanderbilt's first SEC loss uh, if with uh, losing to Carolina in the first game of the doubleheader. That's a call strike to Ryan Targotch. It's 0-2. With Arkansas up, you said they'll be looking for the sweep of that series, and the Hogs will try to get to 6-0 in SEC play. Number one team in the country. Yep. 0-2 pitch, Ryan Targoch, ground ball, into the shift to the right side of the infield. And that was Logan Kohler, the third baseman, who moved all the way over to the right side of the bag, and very close to second base, who fields that and throws out Ryan Targoch. So... It's one of those shift things that we're going to write 5-3 in our scorebook, a ground out to the third baseman, although he hit it well to the right side of the infield. I, I finally know how I'm going to notate that. You know, the upside down K is swing and a miss is a ball that was like a pitch clock violation because, you know, you had backwards and forwards Ks. Mm -hmm. Get a pitch clock and, it, and you get that. I'm going to start putting five in parentheses so I know that he was on the shift. All right, I'll join you. I'll do the same. Caden Sorrell is the hitter. First pitch to him was a strike. That next offering, here's a breaking ball that's outside for a ball. So 5-3 on the bouncer by Targotch. We're putting the five in parentheses. Sorrell tagged that towards section 12, and he got it out of here. About two rows deep into section 12. Third home run of the day for the Aggies, Caden Sorrell. He goes yard, and it's 4 to nothing. a and Second home run of his freshman year. Solo shot into section 12 over the wall and right. The hard hit balls are falling or getting over the fence, and that's a big change from last night and really Thursday night's game as well. Jim Schlossnagel said it in our Wells Fargo warm-up. He felt the Aggies have hit the ball hard in this series, and he said maybe today we can get a few of them out of here with not as much wind here on this Saturday. And the Aggies have left the yard three times, twice by Braden Montgomery, and Caden Sorrell just did it. Four to nothing A&M, Gavin Grohovac the hitter, first pitch to him, fouled away, and then this one's low for a ball, so it's one and one. Gavin is 0 for 2 in this game. He hit two home runs on Thursday night in the series opener, check swing. Doesn't matter if he went around or not, that was in the zone, called strike, one and two. Gavin hit a grand slam over the scoreboard on Thursday night. Biggest swing of the bat and the Aggie win there. He has hammered this pitch, but to straightaway left field into the glove of Aaron Downs on the run just in front of the warning track. That left the bat at 106 miles per hour. A&M is barreling up some baseballs this weekend. Luke Dotson, freshman left-hander, is starting to warm up for Mississippi State. Jace Laviolette now hit a double deep to right field his last time. First pitch here will miss. It's 1-0. Oh. Yeah, he had too much topspin to get it out. Check swing here. Actually, not much of a check swing, but the pitch was on the inside corner. Call strike 1-1. One and one. Here is that 1-1 one, one pitch from Sanja, high and away for a ball, 2-1. and one. Aggies 4, Bulldogs nothing. Caden Sorrell, a solo home run this inning. A&M four runs on five hits. The Bulldogs no runs on one hit. Rip down the line, right field, fair ball. Off the bat of Jace Lavulette. He's got speed. He will round second and stop there. You don't want to make the third out at third base. But just for entertainment reasons, you love to see Chase Lavulette run, and you almost wanted him to round second and turn toward third. Doubles again, though, second double of the game. Well, I knew you didn't want to make the, the third out 
before John Sheshik told you that last night on the broadcast. I mean, you know, he wasn't he wasn't he wasn't coaching you up on that, but right there he's got to pick up Nolan Kane there in the box, and it was easy to put that up, even though they intentionally walked Braden Montgomery. Well, Braden Montgomery was coming up. He has two home runs today, and they'll just put him on base. Intentional walk. So the 44 Farms meet of the order is on base. Laviolette at second, Montgomery at first, and here comes Jackson Appel. Jackson's one for two in this game. He's four for nine in the series. He's moved up to the cleanup spot in the order because he's just been terrific the last couple of weeks. First pitch to him, that'll be a called strike on the outside corner with a fastball. So with two outs, a chance here to tack on a bit more. Already leading four to nothing in the bottom of the fifth. Same job throwing right-handed right now. He stepped off the mound. He looked pretty upset about something. His third baseman, Logan Kohler, comes over and I think gives him the uh, wristband system that gets the signals. Now Chris Malo uh, Limonis, the Bulldog head coach has come out, and he is saying, I think, that the Bulldogs can't communicate. Maybe there's problems with their system, that wristband system that tells the pitcher in the infield what they want thrown. Kohler gave Sainja his wristband a moment ago so he could get what pitch to throw. It's a La Casa Tequila break and play. Now it's over. Communication system seems to be uh, back up and running for Mississippi State, if that was the case. That's low for a ball, one and one to Jackson Appel. Nap.com and help build the best NIL program in the country. All right, we think the Bulldogs can communicate now, and they've got a runner picked off in Jace Laviolette in between second and third base. They wheeled around, and Jace was breaking toward third base. They got him picked off, and in a rundown, they'll tag him out, team, anywhere. Get a free trial at SiriusXM.us slash SEC Radio 2023. All right, let's go to the top of the sixth. Logan Kohler steps in for the Bulldogs, left on left as he looks out at Justin Lampkin. First pitch, a strike, so it's 0-1. And, and Lampkin back to work with that shift on to the right side. They shift Kohler to pull. Here is the 0-1, and that's outside and away and up. One ball, one strike. Justin Lampkin threw five and a third innings, has struck out nine and only allowed one hit. 1-1 one, one pitch right here. That's outside for a ball. Two and one. Lampkin has a strikeout in every inning. He had two strikeouts in each of the first four frames and then K to man in the fifth. Hard cut by Logan Kohler. On a high pitch, he came up empty, strike two. Let's see if we can get rid of him here to start the top of the sixth. Two two pitch that missed outside, three and two. Weekend number two of SEC play, first home weekend in conference play. Series decider on this Saturday. 3-2 pitch to Kohler, swinging, lifted left field. Caden Sorrell moving over toward the line, and he will make the catch. One out, top of the sixth. So Sorrell starting in left field today. Hayden shot usually out there. Hayden is the DH in this one. Ryan Targach, the start at second base today. That nod had gone to Caden Kent in the first two games of the series. Fouled off on the first pitch to Johnny Long, straight back. So 0-1 oh to Long, here's that pitch. Swing and a miss, that pitch was away with a fastball. Not enough bat to get out of there, out there for Johnny Long. He's down in the count 0-2. Oh, and two pitch on its way, high and tight. Fastball right there, up and in. Let's change the eye, eye level there. 
pitched it right where he wanted to set this one up. One two pitch now on its way, fouled off back to the net. Johnny Long stays in there. Bulldogs go back to the top of the order after Long. Mississippi State's only hit of the day, a double an inning ago by Hunter Hines. Hines has been the top dog at the plate this weekend. And now Long has fouled that onto the East Lawn. Packed with folks on this Saturday afternoon. So is Section 12. They're lining left field back behind the wall in front of the rec center over there. Great crowd, one and two pitch here. Got him looking. Justin Lampkin doing flat out dominant work. Trying to get the Aggies the series. He just struck out his 10th Bulldog. Perfect spot right under the hands, right to the corner of the plate. And now third time through. See if he has another adjustment. Amani Larry. First pitch. That is another nice pitch. Just fastball busted him in her half. Called strike. It's 0 and 1. Lamp in the 0 1. That's hit pretty well into left field. Sorrell drifting over. He's going to have room. And in front of the warning track, he will make the catch. Three up, three down for Lampkin in the sixth. He adds another strike. We're heading to the bottom of the sixth inning, and Jackson Appel leading it off. Jackson was at the plate when Jace Lavalette was picked off to end that last frame. So here we go again with Jackson Appel. First pitch to him from Gerangelo Sanja, a strike. Here is the 0-1 on its way, swinging a miss, strike two. St. John's still going. He's allowed six hits. He's allowed three homers. He continues on into the sixth. Jackson Appel, he stays hot. He ripped this into the gap. That'll get down, and he's churning for second, and he slides in ahead of the throw safely. Jackson Appel, second hit of the day. Have we mentioned how terrific he's been lately? And he doubles to start the Aggie half of the sixth. And that's where that opposite field shot he had earlier might have influenced him to play the center fielder a little bit, uh, you know, um, moving towards the left field there, opening up that gap in right center, and he finds it. Ted Burton. Charged with driving him in. First pitch to Ted Burton on its way. Call strike 0 and 1. Ted's 0 for 2 in this one. A ground out and a strikeout. Jackson Appel gets his lead at second base. Here's the 0 1 to Burton. That's in the dirt. Blocked by the catcher, Johnny Long. So one and one to Ted Burton. Sanja with that pitch, reached out, fly ball, right field. They're going to be able to get over to that toward the gap. Dakota Jordan got over there, ran it down. Throw to third base, tagging is Jackson Appel. And they may have gotten him at third base had Logan Kohler not dropped the ball as Jackson Appel slid in. That is a great throw by Dakota Jordan. But Appel going to be safe at third base after tagging. Well, you made him make the play, and, and that's a great throw. It was online, but it's a long throw, and it was going to be a, a have to get skipped in there unless the third baseman leaves his spot and moves a little bit towards the second base bag, and then it got away from him. So, you know, you, you made them make a play. They nearly did, but you got your runner at third with less than two. Hayden shot at the plate. Infield will come in for Mississippi State. First pitch to shot, a ball, 1-0. Sanja with that 1-0. It's on its way. Swing and a miss by Hayden. Even the count at 1-1. One one. So I say the infield is in. Amani Larry, the second baseman, is up toward the grass at the front of the infield dirt. David Mershon, the shortstop, is not quite as up. He is in, but not as far as Amani Larry is the second baseman. That's a foul ball by Hayden. Shot, and it's 1-2. Hayden's 
down in the count, but he's got to be thinking some kind of contact. That would give a chance to Jackson Appel. One-two pitch, and he's lifted this to left. That will be deep enough. Right in front of the track, Aaron Downs makes the catch. But here comes Jackson Appel. He will score. Shot drives him home. Five to nothing. The Aggies up the lead. Manufacture a run there. There's That's kind of Mississippi State's regular game plan. Get somebody on, move them around. So you get a run score, double, and then two balls to the outfield where you're, you're, you take advantage of a, a bang, bang play at third and then a good sacrifice fly for that lead. Up to five now. With bubbles in the air and making their way into the booth, Ali Camarillo hits. Fouled off the first pitch. It's 0-1. Thomas up here like a kid trying to pop the bubbles as they roll into the booth. <laughs> one right in front of me, I'll get that. One and one now to Ollie Camarillo. As that last pitch missed. Ollie 0 for 2 today. Same job, the 1-1 one, one, high and tight and it hit him in the helmet. That was a fastball. He unloaded at 97. Hardest pitch he may have thrown today, and it hit Ali Camarillo in the helmet. Now, Ali went down, but he's back up. Training staff is out there with him, walking right by him up the first base side. He gets a pat on the back and continues on to first base. He'll check out okay, and he will run after being hit by a pitch. Hit right in the helmet with a fastball in the high 90s. How's pitch number 98 for Sincha? Been relieved. Eight in innings pitch, three hits, three runs, all three are earned. He's walked three, struck out 14. 111 the batting average against Dotson. The only extra base hit is a double this season. Ryan Targot steps in from the right side. A southbound train rolling by behind the right field wall in section 12. That's outside for a ball, 1-0 to Targot. And nobody comes out of the bullpen is going to have the stuff that Sanja has. The 1-0 on its way. Ground ball, that is back up the middle, but that's exactly where Amani Larry played him. Seven for the Bulldogs. A&M makes a change defensively. Caden Kent has come into the game to play second base. Call strike on the first pitch to David Mershon. Justin Lampkin has struck out a Bulldog hitter in every inning, struck out two in each of the first four frames. And then Cade, a man in the fifth, Cade, another guy in the sixth, swing and a miss here by David Mershon. He is down in the count 0 and 2. That was the 80th pitch for Justin Lamp. Well, and the control that he's had tonight has been spotless. Here's the 0 2 swinging, bouncing ball. This is at Ali Camarillo. Field and throw on the run, and he got him. Get the opposite number right there. 6 3 on the bouncer by Mershon. One down in the top of the seventh. And with Jordan and Hines due up, that leadoff hitter, huge to get him out. Yeah, no question. You want to see Jordan and Hines with nobody on base. That is the case. Jordan, uh, first pitch to him, called strike inside. Jordan has struck out looking twice today against Justin Lampkin. Thomas Dick just handed me the attendance numbers. We'll get you them after Jordan bats. We thought there would be over 7,000 here today. You're about to find out if we were right or wrong. I'm going to say you're gonna go you with, were right. Well, you're going to go with the over 7,000. I'm going to go with the over. Aren't you? Yes. you can't throw out a number. How much over? One and one. That's a way ball. 72.89. You're on 72.89. Yes. Because I, I counted 89 people outside the <laughs> stands. Behind the left field wall. Then I'm going to count them if it's 7,200. <laughs> 2-1 pitch, swing and a miss, strike two. Boy, he uncorked on that and popped the buttons off the jersey trying to put that one in play. Jordan, 2-2 pitch. Lampkin on its way, fouled it off. 
I said I'd get it to you after Jordan hits. We'll give it to you right now. Attendance today, 7,159. Oh, man. But we were right in the fact that early on we thought this would be over 7,000. There's at least 140 people out there. <laughs> Come on now. It's a 2-2 pitch to Jordan. He called time at home plate. Jordan got something in his eye. And he walks away from home plate. And he gets written up for it. You know, used to, you'd have something in your eye you wouldn't get written on the umpire scorecard there. <laughs> but, but that's a disengagement right there. <laughs> yeah, Morris Hodges writes that down. Yeah, you don't want a contact to pop out after you had that. I mean, you'd have to bat with one eye. <laughs> Blur vision. It. No, you had to because you'd get called strike three put on you. Yeah, with a 2-2 count, certainly. Now we're ready to go. 2-2 pitch, and he got him looking. He has struck out Dakota Jordan three times today, all looking. And Jordan is just like heading back to the dugout, just cannot believe it because he has had no clue on what is being offered by Lampkin. 11 Ks for Justin Lampkin, at least one strikeout in every inning today. Pitches outside to Hunter Hines to start his count. Only base runner today. Yep, the double to lead the fifth, but he was stranded right there. Swing and a miss, off speed, out in front of it, and a 1-1 count. Shift is on to the right side. Caden Kent, the new second baseman, is playing in shallow right field. 1-1 pitch, ground ball into that shift. Ali Camarillo, the shortstop, playing time up. He launched a home run into section 12, a solo shot over the right field wall. And he's looking out at Luke Dotson, the left-hander for the Bulldogs. First pitch away, and it's 1-0. So A&M, five runs on seven hits. Mississippi State, no runs on just one hit. And one base runner on the day for the Bulldogs against Justin Lampkin. Such brilliance on the mound for the left-hander. This last pitch to Caden Sorrell missed away. It's 2-0. Dotson back to work. Fouled that off, did Caden Sorrell. Straight back, 2-1 the count. 90 pitches for Lampkin, so be interesting to see how much more he's allowed to go. He's got plenty of uh, movement and his stuff has been firm the whole time, so he may he may be out there for the eighth inning. 2-1 pitch, lofted foul, out of play. Left field side, so it's 2-2 two two to Sorrell. A&M has home runs today from Sorrell and two homers from Braden Montgomery. Two-two pitch to Caden Sorrell. From Dotson is on his way. Swinging, he's gone down the line opposite field. Base hit into left. Sorrell's gonna round first and he's turning towards second and he's sliding in there ahead of the throw. The Aggies starting to take two bags. Have that as the fourth double of the day for Texas A&M. Two of them by Jay Slavulet, a Jackson Appel double, and now one by Caden Sorrell. And a chance to see Caden Sorrell as uh, we've got something going on between members of the coaching staff here. Lead off this inning, so nobody out. Caden running at second base. Gavin Grohovac at the plate. Gavin's 0 for 3 in this game. First pitch to him from Schulke on its way, and that's a call strike. Shift is on to the left side. They play Gavin Grohovac to pull. Well, that's with the uh, submariner. Outside pitch, you can take it to the big gap out there in right center if you can get on it. That low arm slot on that pitch, and that's fouled off by Grohovac. It's 0-2 the count. And then he'll come up, uh, you know, true sidearm or maybe even a little bit north of that and almost be three quarters. So plenty of arm slots for Schulke. The 0 2. Rip that's going to go foul toward the Aggie bullpen in left field. He turned on one and crushed it. 
but it goes foul. That at 102. Off the bat. Plenty of exit velo this weekend for the Aggies. Here's the 0-2 from Schulke. The pitch. Low and in, blocked behind home plate by Johnny Long. So still looking for more. The Aggies have scored in three innings in a row. They got one in the first and then two in the fourth, one in the fifth, one in the sixth. And got a leadoff double here in the seventh. The one and two to Grahovac. Breaking ball, and he got enough on it out there to tip it foul off the end of the bat to stay alive. That's a true sidearm pitch right there, slider. And maybe seeing it last night helps you in that, you know, that you, you have seen that uh, against you and your teammates last night. Stick with the ball and two strikes on Gavin Grohovac. And Schulke the pitch. Ground ball, right side, base hit. They shift it into the left side. He hit it to the right side. And he'll drive home. Caden Sorrell, 6 0 Aggies. That right there is why you, I, I just feel like with the side armor, you've got to play straight up because of that right there. If he just puts the ball in play on a, on a pitch that's breaking outside, that's what you're going to get. Don't try to yank a ball. Maybe you're thinking a freshman power hitter is going to be all pull happy. He just crushed one 106 foul. But no, he worked it exactly right right there. Beautiful piece of hitting. Drives home Sorrell. More bubbles Trying in the Trying to air. call time and get a pitching change probably. He will face Jay Slavulet. Bring in our right-hander to face the left-handed hitting Jay Slavulet. Shift is on to the right side. First pitch from Ligon. That's a call strike. 0 and 1 to Jace Lavulet, who has doubled twice today. Last two times up. He's gone for two bases. Here is the 0 1. Swing and a miss. He looked out in front of that. 0 and 2. So with the two doubles, Jace, the batting average at 318 as we speak. 0-2 pitch, here it is. Got enough of that one to foul it off toward the Aggie on deck circle where Braden Montgomery is waiting. Deep breath right there before he stands back in. Taps the plate and looks out at Ligon. 0-2, again, swinging, fly ball. Down the line and right, he got under this. Looks like it's going to go foul, and it will. By the time it lands, it gets pretty good distance up there onto the east lawn. Scoreboard update, Arkansas leads Auburn 5-2 to two in the bottom of the sixth inning. Tied at three between Alabama and Georgia in the top of the fourth. And Missouri leads Kentucky 4-1. to one in the top of the fourth inning there in Columbia, Missouri. So Missouri had not led in any of their previous SEC games. Missouri trying to win their first conference game and hand Kentucky their first conference loss. Here's a two strike pitch to Jace Lavulette, swing and a miss, struck him out. Yeah, that was gonna be a strike. And uh, it, it too late to uh, make that swing. So two for four day. Now Braden Montgomery Lit up this crowd of over 7,000 twice today. He homered in the first, and he homered in the fourth, and then angered this crowd, did the Bulldogs the third time Montgomery came up because they intentionally walked him. That was met with a chorus of boos and a swing and a miss here by Montgomery. He's down in the count 0-1. So Braden now 12 home runs on the season with the two today. And he has driven in 39 runs on the year. He is the SEC leader in RBIs. Trickled that foul, and he's down in the count 0 2. AM has a run home here in the bottom of the seventh that started with a Caden Sorrell double, and then Gavin Grohovac singled to bring him home. Gavin running at first base right now with one out. 
A&M leading six to nothing. Six runs on nine hits for the Aggies. And we're getting shut out ball and a brilliant, excuse me, a brilliant performance from Justin Lampkin, the left-hander on the mound as we speak. We'll see how much longer Justin goes in this one. And this is a long inning for him to sit in the dugout yeah. as well, Will. There's been some pauses in this frame. Here's the 0-2. And that will miss upstairs, a ball and two strikes to Braden Montgomery. And Braden steps back in from the left side. And the left side of the infield is wide open because they shift him to the right side to pull. Here is the one two swinging. He hit that straight up in the air to straight away center field high. And when it falls, it'll fall into the glove of Connor Hyzak, two outs on the F8 to center. So Braden Montgomery, two for three today with those two home runs. He's also been intentionally walked. Let's hit you high. <laughs> too high. 41 degrees on the launch angle. Uh, 103, but too high. Says the former Cleveland Indian fans. Yeah, I'm not banging on a drum. From out Major the, League, yeah. Banging on a drum in the out there at the mistake by the lake. <laughs> Jackson Appel. They got that new stadium, by the way. The Indian stadium. The Gardens? Guardians? Yeah. Uh, that, uh, no, that, was that, the, Rachel, that was the Indians. That Rachel Phelps was looking for? Yeah, no. <laughs> yes, they are the Guardians now, but they were the Indians. Oh, yes. One and one, the count now to Jackson Appel. Last pitch was a strike. Ligon will throw to first base. He'll check on Gavin Grohovac, who's back diving safely. Jackson Appel, two for three today. Ground out, single, double. That's what he's done in order. Here's the 1-1. One, one. That's a call strike on the outside corner. 1-2. and two. So three home runs, nine hits. We've scored in four straight innings, and we're getting dominance on the mound from Justin Lampkin. That's how you have an Aggie 6 to nothing lead in this series-deciding game on Saturday. Fouled away on the 1-2 to Jackson Appel. And another reminder, tomorrow night, 7.40 p.m. in Memphis, round two of the NCAA basketball tournament, your Texas A&M Aggies will take on the Houston Cougars. That's fouled away. Stick with a one-two count. Trip to the Sweet 16 on the line tomorrow night in Memphis. The two former Southwest Conference rivals, A&M and U of H. Played each other earlier this year. Yeah, Aggies were without Boots Radford and took the Cougars to the wire. Cougars are the one seed in the region. Throw over to first base again, check on Grohovac. And Just like every NCAA tournament, we uh, know that seeds do not matter in this in That this has basketball proven tournament. true again, yet again in 2024. One, two pitch, ground ball, and they will throw out Jackson Appel. So Jackson Appel two for four right now. I would say he's been brilliant, but that may not even do it justice. Wynn's going to carry that one out of play. Foul ball on the first pitch to Connor Heisek to lead it off for the top of the eighth. See, that's a 12-pinch inning, a 14, an 11, a 16, a 12, and an 11. I'm going to call that efficient. And now Heisek. Rips a base hit single back up the middle, and the Bulldogs get the leadoff man on in the top of the eighth. The second hit and the second base runner that Justin Lampkin has allowed today. It hit 108, so probably the hardest hit ball. Even the double wasn't hit nearly that hard. But you know what you have to do to get a double play from Dos Equis. Yep. You have to have a burner on. See if you can turn one. X out a couple of runners with a Dos Equis double play. Breaking ball to Aaron Downs to start his count. That's a called strike. 
I'm not putting in the call like it did on Thursday. I'm just. Oh, you nailed it Thursday, man. It happened literally less than 10 seconds after you said it. The 0 1. High for a ball, 1 and 1. I mean, you could get it 6 4 3. Camarillo to Kent to Burton. 4 6 3. Do it the other way around. Start it with Gavin Grohovac. Go 5 4 3. However you want to do it. Strike him out, throw him out. We'll take <laughs> hey, it, whatever. Steal attempt, yeah. That's outside for a ball to Aaron Downs. It's two and one, the count. Down six to nothing. The steal attempt is very unlikely. I wouldn't think you're going to get the strike him out and throw him out at this point. Two one pitch. Fouled away right side. Out of play. Two balls, two strikes to the Bulldog left fielder, Aaron Downs. Lampkin dangles that left arm. Now it goes to the glove. Stands tall from the stretch on the hill. 2-2 pitch on its way. Swing and a miss. And the 12th man has watched Justin Lampkin strike out 12 today. And he struck out Aaron Downs three times, all swinging. Okay, so you got your K. You keep the string of a strikeout in every inning. Now you can go ahead and get the Dozeggies double play. Still intact, still in play. Yeah. Bryce Chance is the hitter. Chance has flown out to right and grounded out to first base. Pitch on its way. High for a ball. Just a little bit above the zone. Didn't miss by too much, but it's 1-0. Oh. Lampkin from the stretch, the leg kick and the delivery. Swinging, foul ball back onto the net, and then it <laughs> nearly <Carum> hit. <laughs> caromed off the net and nearly landed right on home plate, which means it also either hit Jackson Appel or Chance down there at the plate. Chance but caught it on one hop. <laughs> and it's one and one. Left on right matchup. Here's the pitch. Low away for a ball at 81 miles per hour. He took something off of that. That's pitch 100. So he's at the century mark. He'll go over 100 right here. The 2 1 pitch, swinging, fouled out of play, just up above us, 2 and 2. It has been a gorgeous Saturday afternoon with blue skies above us, and for the most part, Bluebell Park has been full. Olsen Field down there has been splashed in sun. And we are getting a beautiful performance on the mound from Justin Lampkin. Two and two to Bryce Chance. On its way, high for a ball, so you'll get a full count pitch next. Haven't seen him lose the spot very often like that. Yeah, that may have been his biggest miss of the day. Yeah, but you missed it up and out. And not missing an inner half where you can get a ball turned on. Three two pitch right here on its way. Reach out, foul it off, right side. Stay with the three two count. We're not running on that, see, so you, they were trying to stay out of that no seconds double play. I wondered if they may try to just avoid it with Isaac in motion over there. Not the case, so we're ready to go with another full count pitch. Lampkin to Chance, and it's on its way. Just missed up and in, and that's his first walk of the day, and it's the first time Mississippi State will get two base runners on in an inning, and that is likely Back is Logan Kohler, first pitch to him. That bounced out in front of home plate. It was blocked by Jackson Appel. It's ball low, 1-0. Six-foot, 290-pound senior. So here's the 1-0 to Logan Kohler. Pitch on its way. He showed bunt, pulled back. That pitch was low. It's 2-0. The 2-0 from Evan Oshenbeck on its way, way out and up. It's 3-0. Likely the take sign here for Logan Kohler. As they have all day, the Aggies shift him to pull over to the right side. Three infielders to the right side of second base. Oshenbeck, a 3-0 pitch on its way. 
caught the outer half, caught the outside corner, called strike. Kohler had thrown the bat away and started to walk down to first base. Yeah. He thought it was ball four. Morris Hodges called it a strike. It's three and one. Here is that pitch. Swinging, base hit, center field. Aggies will likely lose the shutout right here. RBI single by Kohler will bring in Connor Hyzak. A&M leads six to one with one out in the top of the eighth. And Bryce Chance went to second base on that RBI single by Logan Kohler. Took the outside pitch the opposite way. Second time the Bulldogs have seen Oshenbeck this weekend, so they have a better idea of what his repertoire is. Johnny Long, the hitter, first pitch. Called strike in her half with a fastball. Oshenbeck trying to keep it at just the one run of damage here in the eighth. Went off speed there. That just missed. A little bit low. It's one and one. So in the eighth, the Bulldogs get on the board. 1-1 one, one pitch, swinging. Very high in the air. Left field line. Sorrell into foul territory. Over the fence. And he reached over the wall where the Aggie bullpen is to make the catch. Terrific play by the freshman. That's a Moss Fajitas. Moss hustle play. Moss Fajitas is a proud partner of Texas A&M Athletics. Great play by the freshman. Caden Sorrell, two outs. I mentioned earlier about him making that play, you know, to the gap side, where his, he's got to go across his body with the glove being a left-hander. That time that he's able to, you know, have that ball to the glove side and reach over the fence, over the wall there, and bring that one back in. Terrific stuff, and now there's two down in the top of the eighth. It's the top of the order in Amani Larry. Aggies lead six to one. Fly ball right field on the first pitch to Amani Larry. Coming in and over is Braden Montgomery, and he will make the catch on the jog. Texas A&M leads in the bottom of the eighth, six to one. And here we go with Ted Burton, and the first pitch from Auger is a cold strike. Teddy's 0 for 3 in this one. Ground out, strike out, fly out. Right on right matchup. And a pitch high there in a one on one count. So we close out against the Bulldogs today. Teddy's fouled this one way high, and it looks like it might get out of play. This is going to be close. It's down toward the AM dugout. It barely stayed in play, and right in front of the Aggie dugout, Logan Kohler, Bulldog third baseman, made the catch. It's a foul out by Ted Burton. Yeah, that one uh, had the wind blow it back a little bit, and you look out at the flags, they're not. Looks like it might be turning around, getting a little bit of a south wind here. Maybe uh, Aggie uh, softball that starts at 4.30 against Auburn will have a south wind. Yeah, they're going to start in 12 minutes. So if the Aggie, Aggies, you want them to close this one out, then you head over to Davis Diamond to catch game two of the series between A&M softball and Auburn. The Aggies won last night. Terrific season that Trisha Ford and the Aggies softball team are having. A&M is 6-1 and one in SEC play, and they try to go beat the Auburn Tigers again today. Here's Hayden shot. First pitch, a ball. Next pitch, another ball. Now here's the 2-0 pitch, and that's fouled off 2-1. and one. Our Seat Geek next game is on Tuesday against Houston Christian, 6 o'clock here at Bluebell Park. Foul ball again for Hayden shot, so it's 2-2. Two and two. Done with Mississippi State after this one today, and then our Seat Geek next game, Tuesday night, 6 o'clock, against Houston Christian, 2-2 pitch in the dirt. Seat Geek is the official fan-to-fan -fan ticket marketplace of Texas A&M Athletics, whether you're buying or selling baseball tickets. Seat Geek is the place to do it, SeatGeek.com, so fans can fan. 
And back-to-back -back weeks of Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah, we'll have Auburn. Speaking of Auburn, this is a bouncing ball at first base, and Hayden Schott will be out as they flip to the pitcher covering. So there's two down to the bottom of the eighth. Yeah, this is a home stand we have going right now. It started with Prairie View on Wednesday. Then you get these three against Mississippi State. Houston Christian, I told you, is our seat geek next game. And then Auburn will visit next weekend, and that is a series that will start on Thursday and run through Saturday. We will avoid Easter Sunday. Six, six, and one. Game times for the Aggies and Tigers. So softball taking on Auburn this weekend. Baseball hosts Auburn next weekend. So we are in the middle of the eight-game homestand here. This is game four of eight in a row here at Bluebell Park. And again, just a phenomenal crowd on this beautiful Saturday. Over 7,000 here at Bluebell Park, and they have the Aggies leading 6-1 to one here in the bottom of the eighth with Ali Camarillo batting and an 0-2 count. Going to try to shut down the Bulldogs in the ninth and claim the win on this Saturday, and it would give us the series. 0-2 pitch. That's in the dirt. Blocked by the Bulldog catcher, Johnny Long. Nice block. And the 71-59 is the attendance inside and out there in Section 12. But uh, love to see the fans outside left field wall up at the uh, rec center. It's been a great day thus far at Bluebell Park. And now we're going to try to shut down the Bulldogs and get the win here in the ninth. A couple of doubles from Jace Laviolette. Two hits from Jackson Appel, one of those a double. Sorrell, after his home run, he doubled later. AM and swinging the bats, and the Aggies lead 6-1. to one. Here we go to the ninth. First pitch to David Mershon, a ball, 1-0. Oh. Oshenbeck comes back with a 1-0 pitch. That's a called strike. One ball, one strike to the Bulldog shortstop, David Mershon. Oshenbeck, tall on the hill. And the Brenham native goes to the windup. 1-1 one, one pitch high for a ball. Fastball. Stayed up. 2-1. and one. Heart of the order for Mississippi State here in the top of the ninth. 2-3 and 4. Mershon, Jordan, and Hines. 2-1 pitch. That caught the outside corner. And it's 2-2. Two and two. Two-two pitch, Evan Oshenbeck on its way. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. For Evan Oshenbeck, that's his first strikeout in this relief appearance. Couple that with Justin Lampkins, 12, and AM pitching has 13 Ks on the day. In every inning now, the Aggies have punched out at least one of the Mississippi State Bulldogs in all nine. They keep the streak alive. Dakota Jordan swinging right field, coming over. Braden Montgomery, he'll make the catch. Jordan swinging at the first pitch, and he flies to right. There's two down, and the Aggies need one more to get this Saturday game and the series. Right on time, northbound with two engines, crosses behind right field in section 12, and now the Aggies are going to shift Hunter Hines over to the right side. He's been the best hitting Bulldog of the weekend. And Evan Oshenbeck, a left on left matchup with the crowd roaring now. First pitch to Hines. Nice pitch inside corner called strike. 0 oh and 1 to Hunter Hines. Hines today is 1 for 3. He has a double. The 0 1 pitch. That will miss a bit low. 1 and 1. Oshenbeck, ready to deal, one and one. Call strike on a fastball right down the heart of the plate. 90 miles an hour right there, cut the plate in half. One pitch away, hardest pitch to get in baseball. They're on their feet at Bluebell Park, the one, two. Call strike three, got him looking. And Hines is not going to go silently. He's arguing with the home plate.